And now to take us out, um, we have my friend, one of the internet's great native musicians, uh, live from New Zealand, the brilliant Amanda Palmer. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, wave your hands if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear the birds? Can you hear the birds? There, I'm. Uh, I'm in New Zealand, um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and real birds. Someone said, "Yes, they're real birds." This is not a background. This is a real place called New Zealand. <laughs> here um i'm a i'm a white woman in her 40s i'm wearing uh i'm sunburned and i'm wearing what's called a punamu around my neck which is a green stone from new zealand and i have had a really fucked up year i was touring here in march i had a four-day tour in new zealand the middle week of march and uh it's a long story, but you can guess what happened, and I'm still here. Uh, and <laughs> I, yes, it's like it's been like a movie, and um, but it's been a very hard year for me too because I wound up, you know, in a community where I knew nobody, single parenting a four year old, and it's just been crazy. And I apologize. Um, Eli invited me to do this just recently, and I would have come and attended the whole event because these are all the things that I care about. But um, in the last few days, uh, my husband finally came back to New Zealand after being out of the country for nine months after months and months and months of applying for an exemption. So I've just been with my family for the last couple of days. Um, I would have loved to be with you guys. <clears throat> I have a lot that I think about all the things that you've been talking about. And I'm not at my most articulate because it's really early in the morning here. I've just made some coffee. And um, I, uh, is it okay if I just say a couple things before I play? Um, no one's in a rush to get out. I guess if you're in a rush to get out, you can just leave. I, um, I just wanted to, I don't know how much you guys know about me, but you know, I've spent 20 years not just making music, but being on the internet with people. And I have found it really amazing and really confusing for 20 years. Eli and I just did a podcast where we, we talked a lot about this stuff. And um, I've been trying for years to get my community um, <clears throat> away from just being groups on Facebook or, you know, just being in spaces that feel like they belong to somebody else. But I also have really, in the last few years, thought a, a lot about my own accountability because when Twitter happened, like I ran over there and kind of dragged everyone with me because it was so exciting. And, you know, when I finally sort of figured out how many people were on Facebook, I ran over into that world and that because it was just so delicious and it was so easy and you know less and less people were reading my blog and more and more people were engaged on Facebook and um, I'm really starting only just now to see what disintegrated in the meantime and I you know Eli's story was so beautiful and I, and I, I kind of feel like I see yet another metaphor in it which is you know, that patch of light, like that patch of light came from a, a spotlight it, in what was a work camp. Like the source of that light was pretty, it was pretty shitty, but it was still light. And then, you know, once they escaped that patch of light, you know, then comes the next chapter and the independence and the Nobel prizes. And nowadays I, f I feel like that spotlight is kind of Facebook and Twitter and the massive social media platforms that we're all kind of forced to huddle in and gather in because that's the only fucking light there is and we need it to read and to find each other. But I'm sure a lot of what you guys talked about in the last few days was how to how to move on from that patch of light it like back into the into something that feels a little more like the real world um not to speak so ill of those giant social media platforms but sometimes it feels like we're trapped in a one-inch spot of light <laughs>
Um, so thank you for that story, Eli. It was really beautiful. Um, and just to say one final thing, if you know, because this feels like the place to say it, I um, I have tried to move my community over to Patreon in the last five years. And Patreon is not without its problems, and it's a bit of a clunky platform, but um, it's it's been working, and I've really been upended by, like a lot of musicians, by the pandemic, and haven't been able to move forward with all the work that I wish I could have done this year, because I have a small child. But one of the things that I've been bringing to the musicians, even here in New Zealand, because they don't know about it, is the idea of subscription and patronage and how real it can feel and you know i even saw someone chatted privately with me here right now saying i'm one of your patrons 10 minutes before getting on this i got an email from one of my patrons who's in new york and they emailed me to say i'm on a ventilator dealing with covid and your music has meant so much to me and it's just you know i'm kind of constantly trying to remind people that um you know, our job as artists and musicians is a big one. And holding the community together and trying to be the glue of a community, whether it's using this or it's using our tapey fingers or it's using, you know, our stories and sharing stories like Eli and trying to glue the community together with whatever we can manage. Like, that's our job. If we're doing our job right, it's a service job. And um i would just ask any of you especially as i'm now that i've got my co-parent back i am like hoping to get back into the real world i've been pretty disappeared but please reach out to me i'm really easy to find on twitter and on instagram i'll put my email here in this chat and if you need me i'm here to help and be helped and i hope um i hope we can make a better internet it feels it, it's always felt really weird, but oh my God, does it feel weird right now? And this, this is a sort of a meta song about uh, art and connection. And I think it's probably perfect. If I am picking up on the themes, I think I picked the right song. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to Romy. Thank you to Eli for asking me. It's so awesome to see there's an interpreter here. If I were you, I wouldn't watch me. I would watch the interpreter because that's going to be really entertaining. Here we go. I'm gonna turn into the into the yard a little bit. Sid Vicious played a four-string Fender bass guitar and couldn't sing and everybody hated him except the ones who loved him. A ukulele has four strings, but Sid did not play ukulele. He did smack and probably killed his girlfriend Nancy Spongin. If only Sid had had a ukulele, maybe Sid would have been happy. Maybe Sid would not have suffered such a sad end. He maybe would have not done all that heroin. Instead, he maybe would have sat around just singing nice songs to his girlfriend. So play your favorite cover song, especially if the words are wrong. Cause even if your grades are bad, it doesn't mean you're failing. Do your homework with a fork and eat your Fruit Loops in the dark and bring your Etch-a-Sketch to work and play your ukulele. Ukulele small and fearsful, ukulele brave and peaceful. You can play the ukulele too. It is painfully simple. Play your ukulele badly. Play your ukulele loudly. Ukulele banish evil. Ukulele save the people. Ukulele gleaming golden from the top of every steeple. Lizzie 
Gordon took an accent, gave her mother 40 wax, then gave her father 40 wanted, left a tragic puzzle. If only they had given her an instrument, those Puritans had lost the plot completely. See what happens when you muzzle. Thank you very much!